Hi, my name is Gary Koontz. I'm a storyteller, and I hope you enjoy the presentation of John Henry. John Henry speaking to the captain Says a man should prove himself a man And before I'll let your steam drill beat me down I'll die with a hammer in my hand, O oh Lord I'll die with a hammer in my hand How many of you are familiar with the story of John Henry? What about the song, John Henry? Well then, of course, you know that it's a story based on true events. And of course, it takes place in West Virginia. To be specific, the West Virginia mountains. John Henry was a mighty man. Born in the 1840s as a slave, but he was freed after the Civil War. John Henry grew to be six feet tall. He weighed 200 pounds. He had a big physique, a hearty appetite, and a great capacity for work. He had a devoted wife, Polly Ann, and a son that they both loved dearly. He was well respected in his community and he cared a great deal about the crew that he worked with. He had a beautiful voice, he played the banjo, and his friends and family members, and all those in the community, always loved hearing him sing. They never tired of this great man who had so much to give and cared so deeply. John Henry would spend his days at the camp drilling big holes into the rocks. There was no one who could match John Henry. No one. He outdrilled all of them. He worked from 6 a.m. in the morning until 5 p.m. in the evening. So many of the men had so much respect for John Henry. When he would arrive at the campsite for work, everyone would get really quiet and would just watch John Henry take out his hammer and go to work. He served as a great motivation for all of them. The new railroad was coming along nicely thanks to John Henry and his work. But looming straight in his path was a great enemy, Big Ben Mountain. John Henry's bosses, at the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad realized they were not going to be able to go around the mountain. Instead, they were going to have to go straight through the mountain to complete this new railroad. A thousand men would lose their lives before the great enemy, Big Ben Mountain, was conquered. It took three long years to complete the project. Outside the tunnel, there were hundreds, there were hundreds of sandy makeshift graves of men who had already died trying to get through this mountain. Inside the tunnel, there was dark smoke and dust everywhere. You could barely breathe. You could barely see what was going on inside the tunnel. But John Henry, he worked tirelessly. There was no stopping him. Then one day, a salesman showed up at the campground. He said he had a steam drill that could outwork any man. Of course, John Henry felt that he was the only one who could get this project finished and completed in record time. So naturally, a contest was set up between John Henry and the steam drill. The foreman, Charlie, ran the steam drill. John Henry took out his two 20-pound hammers, one in each hand. They drilled and they drilled, 
dust rising everywhere. The men howled and shouted, Go, John Henry! Go, John Henry! Beat the steam drill, John Henry! You can do it! Go, John Henry! John Henry, go! Go! After 35 minutes, John Henry had drilled two seven-foot holes, while the steam drill had only drilled one nine-foot hole. John Henry held up his hammer in triumph. He was very proud of what he had accomplished. The men could not believe that he was able to outbeat the steam drill, even though they believed in all John Henry stood for, because they had seen what he was capable of day in and day out. The men could not believe that John Henry was able to go to two long seven-foot holes in that time. They had never seen him drill that fast. But of course, John Henry being so naturally competitive, he even surprised himself. The men were shouting and hollering so loud, John Henry, it's unbelievable. John Henry, it's a miracle. John Henry, you did it. John Henry, you beat the steam drill. Even the salesman who brought the steam drill to the campground could not believe that a human being could beat his steam drill. John Henry was so proud of himself. As the men continued to cheer for John Henry, and to howl at his great accomplishment, they didn't realize John Henry was tottering. Exhausted, John Henry fell to the ground, his hammer slipping from his grasp. The men grew silent. The foreman, Charlie, ran over to John Henry. But it was too late. A blood vessel had burst in his brain. John Henry, the greatest man ever to work the railroads, had died. John Henry, John Henry. John Henry said to the captain, a man should prove himself a man. And before I let your steam drill beat me down, I'll die with a hammer in my hand, oh Lord, I'll die with a hammer in my hand. John Henry had a little offspring, he took him gently on his knee, and he said to him, son, do your best, always do the best that you can, my son, always do the best that you can. John Henry took a heavy hammer, and beside the steam drill he stood. He was faster than the drill, but oh, he died, died with a hammer in his hand, oh Lord, died with a hammer in his hand. So they took John Henry to the graveyard, laid him down to the ground. And every time a locomotive passed his grave, the engineer would say, he would always say, There lives a steel.